Now let's talk about some properties of the absolute temperature. First of all, absolute temperature was defined by using this beta parameter, which gives us uh, 1 over Boltzmann constant uh, times temperature is equal to the derivative of natural logarithm of number of accessible states with respect to energy. This is evaluated at equilibrium, the most probable energy. So here we have the number of accessible states, let me remind you, uh, is basically a rapidly increasing uh, function of energy. And how does it uh, vary with energy exactly? We have discussed this uh, in the previous videos where we found that the, the variation is uh, E minus E0, the ground state energy, to the power F, number of degrees of freedom, where F is of the order of Avogadro's number, so it's a huge number. Therefore, we have a large increase in the number of ac accessible uh, states. And um, therefore, if you look at a natural logarithm of omega, you will find that this will be f times natural logarithm of e minus e0 plus some constant and if you look at beta which is uh, the derivative of natural logarithm of omega with respect to energy this will be f divided by e minus e0 and it is positive so therefore we conclude that beta is positive or absolute temperature is something that has to be positive so this is the first property of absolute temperature we find it is always uh, positive uh, now we can estimate uh, the temperature absolute temperature uh, by using the beta parameter since we know that at thermal equilibrium we have energy equals to the most probable energy which is the mean energy of the system so that we're going to have uh, kt equals 1 over beta and therefore this is going to be e bar minus e0 divided by f so uh, we find that this thermal energy, Boltzmann constant times uh, temperature T, is uh, a measure of the mean energy per degree of freedom. So that's the second uh, important uh, property of absolute temperature we find. Uh, basically, we, in, in words, we can say for any ordinary system, at the absolute temperature T the quantity K times T which is thermal energy uh, thermal energy is roughly equal to the mean energy which is measured above the ground state energy per degree of freedom of the system what does degree of freedom mean again it's the uh, number of quantum numbers you have to specify in order to uh, get a specification of the state of the system so uh, we, we can know the mean energy per 
degree of freedom uh, per quantum number you have to specify in order to get uh, the thermal energy. Thermal energy is a measure of mean energy per degree of freedom. Now, uh, that implies that at thermal equilibrium, we're going to have the mean energy per degree of freedom uh, of two systems will be the same. So we're going to have the same measurement for the uh, absolute temperature and this will imply the mean energy per degree of freedom is the same for two systems when we have thermal equilibrium. Mean energy per degree of freedom is the same for both systems 1 and 2. Okay, so that's what it implies. Uh, now I want to look at uh, del beta del E. So how does beta change with energy? Well, since I know uh, beta is given by uh, roughly given by F divided by E minus E0. It's going to be derivative of F with respect to energy uh, that is 0 minus the derivative of the bottom uh, E minus E0 which is 1 times F divided by E minus E0 squared. So this will be uh, minus F uh, or we can say, uh, to be more precise, it goes as uh, minus F divided by E minus E0 squared. You can see it's a negative value. So del beta del E, therefore, is negative. So this is telling us that the probability as a function of E has a sharp maximum sharp maximum at E is equal to E bar. The slope is a negative and since we have a negative slope for beta is a function of energy, what does that imply for temperature? Uh, as energy increases, we find that beta, which is equal to 1 over kt by definition decreases and how does beta decrease because temperature increases so basically we find that uh, if you look at del t del e how does temperature vary with energy it is the derivative with respect to energy of 1 over k beta and this is uh, the derivative with respect to beta of uh, 1 over k beta multiplied by del beta del e uh, th that will be equal to minus 1 over k beta square multiplied with del beta del e del beta del e is negative uh, minus 1 over k beta square is negative so we have minus times minus giving us a plus so that we can explicitly see the temperature derivative with respect to energy is greater than zero. So that is the uh, third important pro property of absolute temperature we find. Uh, it increases with energy. So what does that mean uh, for systems in thermal contact? So this is going to imply for us if system A has a lower initial temperature let's call this initial temperature Ti this system will absorb heat uh, so that 
its absolute temperature will increase to T final. So basically this is saying A is the cold system and the cold system always absorbs heat in order to increase uh, its absolute temperature to the final equilibrium value. Uh, equivalently we can say the same thing for the warmer system. If you have a warmer uh, system it has a higher absolute temperature T initial prime and it will give off or release heat to decrease its temperature absolute temperature to T final prime for this primed warmer uh, system. So basically we can summarize what we have said here. Uh, when any two ordinary systems are placed in thermal contact with each other basically we know which way the heat will flow heat is given off by the system with the larger absolute temperature that is the warmer system and is absorbed heat will be absorbed by the system with the smaller with the lower absolute temperature basically this is our colder system so this summarizes how heat will flow or how absolute temperature tells us in which direction the heat will flow when we form a thermal contact between two systems so let's review these three properties of absolute temperature First of all, we found that this beta, the derivative of number of accessible states, natural logarithm of number of accessible states with respect to energy, varies as uh, or is roughly given by number of degrees of freedom divided by energy above the ground state energy. And this is always positive. So absolute temperature has to be positive. And second property, we can see that because kt by definition the thermal energy is 1 over beta is at thermal equilibrium e bar the mean energy minus ground state energy divided by f so we find that the thermal energy is roughly equal to the mean energy per degree of freedom of the system and this implies that if you have thermal equilibrium between two systems one and two the mean energy per degree of freedom on two sides should be the same. This is something we discovered in our earlier uh, discussions as well. And if you look at the derivative of beta with respect to energy, it tells us that the probability uh, distribution has a sharp maximum at this energy. And since del beta del E is negative, del t del e is positive so that's what it implies because beta is 1 over kt so as beta decreases with increasing energy that means temperature increases so that's the third important pro property and it tells us the direction in which heat will flow heat always flows 
from the warmer system to the colder system. The system with higher absolute temperature will release heat and the system with lower absolute temperature will absorb heat in order to reach thermal equilibrium.